Hi guys, welcome back to another episode of everything you need to know about Piccadilly Grand. Now today we're going to talk about some very interesting statistics that we realized and we have saw on URA. And that is the price movement of two big condos within District 8. And one of them is Freehold, which is City Square Residence, which uh, CJ was actually there even during the beginning of the launch. How many years ago was that? Like 18 years ago, right? Yeah. About 18 years ago, before City Square Residence even uh, started construction, CJ was already there. So we're comparing the difference between City Square Residence and City Lights. The reason why we're looking at these two developments is because City Square is Freehold, and City Lights is 99, located within the same district. But the very interesting observation is the price movement of these two condos are very identical. So today we just want to get CJ's um, opinion because CJ has been around since like 20 years ago, even there at the launch. Why is it that a 99 year condo and the price of a freehold condo in the same district can be the same? So what do you think? <laughs> I think this is something that a lot of people are actually wondering, especially if you ask um, a lot of um, um, consumers out there, right? If yeah. you're side by side, right? Yeah. Given a same premium, district, some yeah, same exactly. district. So yeah. let's say side by side on the same route. Okay, side by okay, side, side by side. Yes. So, uh, if it's a freehold versus a leasehold, which one would you prefer? Yes. So obviously, you will think that there will be a premium for freehold, right? Yes. Which is correct, but because that was like eighteen years ago, okay. Right? there's not much of a difference because they are both marketed at from 5xx per square foot. So both of them started at about 500 plus dollars per square feet. Yes. Okay. So so of course the 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 you know some of the units within the development of, uh, obviously can be 600 over per square foot but uh -huh. but what I'm saying is that there will be starting price that is similar. Okay. So obviously the facing may differ. Actually the price movement is quite similar. Like. No exactly no what I'm saying is during uh, the launch. Uh, during the launch. Do, I mean they are both starting from 5xx. So imagine right now, yes. okay, it, it is on the same road. Same road. Okay. Okay. One freehold, one leasehold, but they are marketed at the same starting price. At the same Which one price. would you prefer? <laughs> wow, that is a very good question. <laughs> yeah. So 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 what I'm saying is mm. that I just want to think um, in today's context, right? Mm. Freehold definitely command a premium okay. over leasehold. Okay. However, that was not the case back then. That so, was not the case yeah, back so, then. So in today's context, in today's context right, yeah. uh, even if it's a freehold versus leasehold on the same road, okay. but that means uh, all the comparison um, perspective are the similar sort of comparison, right? Mm. My question to you is, if you're paying a premium okay. of 20 to 30% for the freehold, okay. which one would you prefer? I would not pay the premium over the freehold. Why not? Because it typically takes a much longer time for freehold properties to appreciate. Okay. 99 year, the, the rate 99 year property appreciate is usually much faster. Okay. So the first question I ask myself is my holding horizon. Okay. If I'm going to only stay in this property for the next five to 10 years, obviously at the point of time when I exit, when I sell, I want this this transaction to be profitable. Okay, so what you're telling me uh, is that yeah. your entry price, yes. because you're paying uh, at a leasehold price there, yes. so you don't pay a premium. But yes. one thing is common, that means if that property is desirable in that vicinity and yes. it appreciates over time, yes. over the five years that you hold on to, yes. actually it goes hand in hand. Okay. That means if it's 2,000 per square foot, this okay. is 2,004. Okay. This will go 2004, this will go 2008. Okay. Correct? It's in, in, in hand in hand in terms of appreciation, okay, right? Okay, but I'm paying less. You are entering at a safer yes. entry price. Safer because it's cheaper. Not just that, okay. but because newer developments, they are catering to the affordability of the newer generation. So okay. the size have already been tweaked, right? Okay, okay. And tweak, of course, yes, yes of tweaked course. in the sense that, of course, you must make it affordable to the to the new group of buyers out there, right? Yes. So this is something that I think um, affordability is the mm. key to today's um, uh, exit strategy. Yes. If you're buying something that is freehold, but it is challenging for the next buyer to come in to buy from you when you want to exit, yes. it becomes a challenge for you to sell. Okay. And when it's a challenge to sell, it becomes mm. less desirable. For sure, for sure. Yeah. So 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 what we are seeing the trend now in today's market mm. is people tend to aim for affordable properties. People tend to aim for affordable properties. Yes. I guess 
affordable properties is not really something that people aim for. It's more of like not having a choice. <laughs> because if you, assuming your HDB <laughs> is worth a million dollars, right, right, and you want to buy a brand new, a, a three bedroom, maybe a, for, a, for a forum HDB, we have three bedroom to a three room condo, yeah. which is a very fair upgrade, yeah. right? Um, if I sell my HDB for a million dollars and this condo that I buy, maybe at most I pay 1.9 million, okay. you know, they're about right, no, 1, but, $1 million but, okay, more. See, uh, what, what you're sharing, right, mm. is very interesting because from what you're sharing, I just want to ask you another question For sure. that, that can lead you to another perspective. Okay. Uh. okay. So okay. so this becomes something very interesting because yeah. when we say affordable, right, yes. it means to say yes. about choices. Yes. So what I'm saying is, for example, mm. a $2 million budget, two million I can buy dollar. a, yeah. a, 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 a potential uh, uh, four bedrooms in um, OCR market yes okay yes however the two million put into the the RCR market maybe a three roomer yes. and if I were to put in a core central region yes probably a two bedder yes so this two million dollars is affordable to almost every location okay it's just it's, yeah. it's, just, it's just a that means it's a decision can yes. you see that yes. so if it's a decision it's mm. still about affordability right yes but you can choose which location you want to be yes and it compromises the size of your bedroom types mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. so so if today's i'm going to ask you this question back again huh? mm -hmm. if you have a two million dollars budget yes would you prefer to buy ocr market yes would you prefer to buy rcr or core central region that is too better well, okay, firstly, of course, it depends on my needs, right? Right, and right. What, what, what I can get value for money. Right. Obviously, if I buy in the outside of central region, yeah. the far, far away places, yeah. I can get a much bigger space. Yeah. But I also have to factor in the intangible things like the daily commute, the yes. traveling to this and there, and it's and not close to where I'm, I, I always go to. So, are you saying time equals money? Of course, time is definitely always <laughs> equals money. We've talked about that just now, right? right. With, I mean, a lot of, it's a perspective thing, right? right? But we both of us believe that with, t with money, you can actually buy time for sure, right? Mm. So um, I'm definitely not going to sacrifice location for space, Okay. right? Um, and of course, if I'm buying something in the core central region and I with $2 million budget, I can only get like a two bedroom, then mm. it doesn't serve much utility purpose, right? Unless maybe if it's for the purpose of investment and I'm very sure that this property can appreciate over time, fair. Okay. So I think RCR is a very fair balance between proximity to town and also the, the utility, which means I get a proper three bedroom, mm -hmm. right? It's it's definitely enough for family to stay in. Three so pro room. probably RCR a good location. Okay. So are you telling me that we can get something below two million dollars for a three bedroom? I am very sure that there will be units of three bedroom, especially in Piccadilly Grand, that is going to go below $2 million. Okay, fantastic. Some, some units here and there. Yep, yep. So I guess in, in, we, we have identified that um, the prices of the freehold and the 99 within the same district, the prices actually go pretty much hand in hand. And one of the reasons is because back then people actually devalue mm. like uh, the, the the utility of the condo yep. over the freeholdness or the uh, the tenure. Would yep. you say that? Yeah. 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 Which is why today we are also talking about lifestyle and people lifestyle. have already mm. you know seen proven um, transactions and proven desirability for mm. integrated developments. Yes. Yes. So like uh, we, for those of you who haven't watched the previous videos that we have made, I actually just want to let you guys know, want to put it out there. Up to date, we, I've already done about seven videos, uh, I think three or four of which with CJ. So we actually talk about why and how some of the integrated developments in Singapore have was very well received by Singaporeans. And obviously we talk about Canning Hill Pierce, we talk about Pass Series 8, and then there is a, there's a lot of others that, that actually saw a, a very good um, capital appreciation, of course, when we buy property above and beyond the property itself and the location, we want to buy something that has the ability to appreciate in value, right? Mm -hmm. So, of course, this, uh, but, and fun fact, I mean, I guess we've talked about this quite a few times, like in the whole District 8, that still isn't one integrated development, mm -hmm. and this one is going to be the first integrated development. Yeah. Yeah. So, okay, so we've covered that freehold and 99, right? So uh, the next thing we want to talk about is the quantum play, okay. right? So for those of you who don't understand what quantum means, it actually means the purchase price, the actual transacted price, not the PSF, all right? So assuming your unit is 800 square feet, 
right? And the PSF is $1,000. So 800 times 1,000, this is the quantum, right? So today we want to talk about the importance of the quantum play. Okay, talking Form about quantum play, yes. yes. Maybe I give you an example in All case right. the viewers out there may not understand fully, right? Okay. So, so maybe we just give an example. Okay. So assuming I'm entering at 1,000 per square foot, which is very, very affordable, right? 1,000. For sure. For sure, right? It's for below sure. land cost, right? For sure. For below land cost. For, yes, it's below land cost. <laughs> it's below land cost. <laughs> so, so, <laughs> If I'm selling a land in okay. Singapore that is okay. freehold, okay. a GCB unit, but okay. 35,000 square feet, okay. and that at 1,000 will be 35 million. Exactly. So million. that will not be very affordable to a lot of people, right? <laughs> except for the high net worth, right? So, okay. Net worth, yeah. so except for the high net worth. Yes. So what I'm saying is that although it is cheap, yes. also called low entry in the per square foot basis, yes. the entry of the absolute quantum, which yes. is the quantum play we are talking about, yes. will be very high, which is yes. $35 million. Yes. So, yes. what we are sharing is that a property with um, low per square foot yes. okay, does not necessarily mean it's affordable. Yes. So actually we did a training the other yes, day. We, yes. uh, we were talking about the, the, the mo which one is more important. Right. Is it more important to be cheap on a PSF yes. or is it more important to be affordable? Yeah. Because like what he said, if you're cheap on a PSF but if the size is too big and the price tag is too huge, hmm. it limits the potential buyer. Yeah. And when the potential buyer pool is minimized, and it, it will be harder for you to sell the property. To exit, right? To yeah. exit, yes, yeah. of course. So, yeah. so of course, when we talk about Piccadilly Grand, we also need to compare it against City Square residents. The quantum play. Yeah, the quantum, quantum play. play. Right. right, so um, if you guys are watching this, thinking of Piccadilly Grand and taking notes, you want to check out the three-bedroom at City Square residents. Okay. Now, very interestingly, the three-bedroom there are hovering about 1,200 plus square feet. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And as of right now, people are trying to sell their three bedroom freehold city square units at about $1,900 per square feet. Which equates to about 2.4? Which equates to about 2.3, 2.4 million dollars, yeah. right? So this 2.3, 2.4 is what we call the quantum, the right. total price tag. Yeah. So the first question we need to ask ourselves, is it a good purchase, is it a safe purchase, is how many people can afford 2.3 to 2.4 to live in that location? Yeah. When we know that at Piccadilly Grand, mm. the three bedroom integrated development, equal proximity and newer as well, is only going to be launching at about 1.9 plus XX million dollars for the three bedroom, yeah. right? So there's definitely room for the Piccadilly Grand's three bedroom 1.9 XX million price to grow towards the 2.3 yeah. before the units at City Square 2.3 million can start to grow. Do you foresee that? Yep, I think uh, it's a very obvious trend yes. seen not just in this not just, year, yeah. but in, in across, generally, yeah, across, generally. Right? and yeah. that was because back in 2013, right, mm. the regulation of total debt servicing ratio yes. was introduced, okay. and because of this TDSR, right, mm. um, affordability comes into play, mm. and, and with that, the government is doing a lot of tweaking yes. between the size of the unit, that means there is a minimum size of the unit, mm. and the, the kind of uh, property price that we are expecting mm -hmm. and the you know all the Singaporean citizens income to balance out yes. whether it is affordable yes so this is really a, a job well done yes that you know today we are seeing a lot of uh, younger generation in their 20s and 30s yes. are in fact the larger group of buyers seen across Island-wide. Oh, that's a very interesting uh, statistics. Yeah. I guess adding on to what you talk about affordability above and beyond TDSR, we yes. also have to look at the value of the HDB in the vicinity. Yes. So I've actually personally transacted a unit at Bendemir recently at about $950,000 plus minus for four-room HDB on a high floor. Yeah. And I also know of the neighboring five-room flat transacting at about coming close to $1.3 million in that area. Do you know what that means? The people living around <laughs> there are pre-affluent, I would not, say? Not, not really, but you okay. see, uh, how I see this, right, okay. is that in the vicinity nearby, yes. maybe the next uh, 500 meters radius yes. or yes. one kilometer radius, yes. there has to be a very good pool of HDB upgraders. For sure, for sure. In order for them to upgrade to, you know, to their desirable lifestyle in a, in a five years down the road or 10 years down the road, yes. that's where you can find yourself a good exit strategy, right? Definitely. And with that, you need to know whether it's affordable to this group of people. Exactly. Now, with what you have just shared, exactly. with one to, okay, one million to maybe a 1.3 million yes. transactions in that vicinity for yes. HDB, right? common. 
It's not uncommon. Yes. And it is very, very potentially that these yes. group of people have the capacity and the affordability yes. to enter into the, the Piccadilly grant as well. Exactly. Right. But they may not be mm. having the the eligibility to buy now because some of them still want to wait out. Yes. Okay. The, yes. the reason is because there's ABSD involved yes, of course. and there is a lower LTV yes. if they were to buy now, right? Yes, so of course. They probably want to wait till mm. it's nearer. Yes. And that's where you if you are eligible to come in to buy now, yes. where you potentially can, you know, exit to sell to this group yes. of people who need it immediate own stay. Yes. In the future. Yes. So yes. I, I just if I'm hearing you correctly, yeah. right? There is a group of affluent people whose HDB's value is going up and yeah. it's very high. And for them to enter Piccadilly Grand, even if let's say you buy it today at 1.9 million. In yeah. the future, when you want to sell, you definitely want to make some profits. Yeah. So you will be able to sell it to the future HDB upgraders in that area because yes. fun. I mean, it's interesting to know that in Bendemir, St. Michael, this whole area, that there, there isn't really a shopping mall. Yeah. So if if they want to upgrade their lifestyle, move towards the sh- closer to the shopping mall. Oh, and the schools have been confirmed. Yeah. Within one kilometer radius from Fair Park Primary, St. Joseph and St. Margaret. Yeah. primary school right yeah. so if they want to move to a better location nearer to the schools nearer to the shopping mall and direct connection to the MRT you know one thing is for sure is that the people living in the area their HDB's valuation is actually pretty high transacted at a very high price so they can afford to come and buy it over from you yep yeah. but like you said some of them might not be able to buy it today because they might not want to rent it's all about regulation it's all about regulations all right about especially regulations. especially for HDB right yeah so they gotta wait for the, the place to be completed Yep. before they can buy it over from people who bought it on day one. Yep. So this this actually is a very, um, it's a good way for people who are looking at it from the perspective of investment to enter this condo Piccadilly Grand at the right time and you know for sure there's going to be a group of organic affluent demand coming in the future. Yep. Correct? Yep. I think that is a very mm. critical uh, criteria to consider before you buy, you yeah. buy any properties, right? Exactly. You, you need to know and exactly. plan for your exit strategy. Exactly. Yeah. Yep. So I guess, okay, so that's all we want to cover today because we've talked about um, quite a few things. If you haven't already, do check out the previous videos. So today we just found out some more interesting statistics and we aim to release more first-hand information to you guys as the viewers as the developer uh, start to release more information. Before we end this video, CJ, do you have anything else to add? Yes, the preview is probably going to start on the 23rd of April. So we finally have a date. Yep. 23rd of April is going to be when the preview starts. Anything right. else? We have to register now so that they can secure a slot to view the actual place yes. and be yes. impressed by the what developers have put in together. Yes. Okay, so 23rd of April, take down the dates. is yeah. the time when you can uh, go to the show flat, register with an agent or directly with the developer sales team and go and have a look at the show flat, right? So we're just going to briefly explain the procedures as well. Hmm. So um, when you're there and if you're interested, you put in a blank check. Yep. With that blank check, you will be given a balloting number, yep. right? And the balloting number will come with a date and you would know on which date and at what time you'll be called. Yep. And at the point of time when you'll be called, right, you probably would have already shortlisted a couple of units, yes. stacks or floors that you're interested in. Yes. And you will be reviewed the price on balloting day at your given timing and you make a decision to move along or not. Yes. Right. So it does not necessarily mean that yep. by putting a check yep. secures you the unit. Yes. You still depend on whether you can be balloted at yes. the, the time where you are given the slot. Yes. And then at a point what is available. Yes. And then you make a decision there. All right. So yeah. so this is just to give yourself an opportunity yep. to potentially be the owner of Peter Deligrand. Yeah. I yep. think I think I think it's good and. Like I said, and I re-emphasize again, the last two integrated development, Passeries 8 and Canning Hill Pierce, sold respectively 85% and 75% in day one. Yeah. And this is the first integrated development that is coming up in District 8. And we expect to see similar demand, yep. especially from a reputable developer with a proven track record in a district where there is a lack of big developments. Yes. Right. So anything else? Uh, just one more thing. Yes. We have dual key units as we well as the five beders. So dual this is also something very rare unit. in the okay. district. Very oh, rare. Okay. So the layouts itself pose as a very interesting uh, proposition for people who are looking to stay on one side and rent out the units on the other side. We've got four bedroom dual keys and five bedroom. Yeah. And the five bedroom premium actually comes with private lift lobby. Fantastic. Fantastic. Yeah. 
All right, so I guess with this, um, this month, some of the more interesting updates we want to give you are right, statistics and trends and price movement across the district and the preferences of the people living in this area. And we hope to see you in the next video. And do register your interest 23rd of April. We will see you at the show flat. Thank you so much. Bye. Bye.